Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Eckelbarger. We've come to another Friday, and Friday is the day for the life of Riley. This is episode number 191 of The Life of Riley, entitled, Riley Punches His Foreman. It originally aired on March 6th, 1948. It's new, it's amazing, it's Prell, P-R-E-L-L, Procter & Gamble's new radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. <laughs> Brings you the life of Riley. <laughs> Prowl, the shampoo that removes unsightly dandruff in as little as three minutes and leaves hair radiantly clean, radiantly lovely, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. <laughs> To hear Chester Riley talk, it would seem that he is endowed with the courage of a lion, the strength of an elephant, and the ferocity of a tiger. But between talking and doing, there's a very wide gap, and Riley invariably falls into it. The other day, for instance, Mrs. Riley and Junior arranged to meet him outside the aircraft plant where he works and do a little shopping together. Hey, Peg! Peg! Junior! Here I am. Oh, hello, dear. Hiya, Pop. Well, you're right on time. Uh, well, I almost wasn't on account of that big ape, Hawkins. Oh, Riley, are you having trouble with your foreman again? That slave driver wanted me to work overtime and finish a job. Well, maybe you should have. Well, I might have if he'd asked me decent. But I didn't like his tone, and I told him so. Look here, Hawkins, I said. You may be my foreman, but you've got no right bellowing at me like a bull. As if you was my wife. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, I didn't mean nothing personal, Dumplin'. After all, you're not a fool. <laughs> if I'd meant you, I'd have said it. Well, anyway, I told him off good. Well, you should have taken a poke at him, Pop. Now, Junior. I almost did. I made him apologize to me, see, but he didn't sound sincere. So I grabbed him by the collar and I shook him up and down, up and down. Pop, put me down. Huh? Oh, well, excuse me, Junior. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. Boy, you're strong, all right. Clean living did it. Riley. <laughs> Dear, do you think it, it was wise laying hands on Hawkins like that? Well, you might have lost your job. I know, but a guy can only take so much. A guy's got pride, you know. That's more important than any job. You're okay, Pop. Well, thanks, son. And let this be a lesson to you, Junior. Don't take no guff from nobody. Stand up to him, like I did to that big baboon, Hawkins. Oh, Riley! Yeah, let's go. Just a minute, Riley. Mr. Hawkins. Who are you calling a big baboon? Uh, uh my boy here. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. Hawkins. Didn't sir. I tell you to stay and finish that job? Yes, sir. Then watch the idea sneaking out the minute my back is tight. Oh, was that your back? <laughs> I didn't realize. I thought you were still facing me. Always trying to squirm out of it, eh, you phony? Hey, now, don't let him talk to you like that, Pop. Grab him and make him apologize, like you did before. What? Uh, the, the, the kid don't know what he's saying. He's drunk. I, I mean... <laughs> now, Riley, I'm going easy on you this time, but next time I give an order, I want to carry it out. Can you get that through your skull? Oh, yes, sir. I'll get it through my skull somehow. <laughs> That's all. You can go. Oh, thank you, sir. Come on, Peg. G good night, Mr. Hawkins, sir. Peg. Junior. I hear there's a big blizzard in the east. And I certainly wish I was there. <laughs> you see, Peg, Junior, about Hawkins. Well, we're home. Yeah, we're home. Well, Riley, aren't you coming in? May I? Uh, <laughs> don't be silly. Junior, about Hawkins. I have some I... homework to do. Excuse me, Father. Hey, did you hear that? He called me Father. 
just like I was a stranger. Well, sit down, Riley. I'll get you something to eat. I ain't hungry. Peg, about Hawkins. I ain't really a coward. Oh, why don't you try to just forget about it? But you it. know I ain't a coward. Well, I know, dear, but... If I have to fight, I fight. Remember that time in the circus when that guy got fresh with you? Remember how I took a swing at him? Yes, I remember. Yeah. I sure taught that midget a lesson. <laughs> well, I'll fix you some supper, Riley. Uh, and the only reason I let Hawkins... Well, was on account of my job. I ain't afraid of him. I, I know, dear, and I certainly didn't want you to fight with Hawkins, but... But why? Well, you... You just can't let people walk all over you. But my job... You said yourself, sometimes pride is more important than a job. Yeah, I know, it's easy to say. But in the morning when you're hungry for bacon and eggs, you can't eat fried pride. <laughs> you understand, don't you? Of course I do. And he'll explain it to Junior, won't you? Well, maybe you'd better leave Junior alone for a few days. Yeah. I guess he hates me. Oh, now, don't be silly. He couldn't hate you. It's just that... Well, I, I guess he's a little disappointed in you. You know how boys are. They like to look up to their fathers, be proud of them. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was always a hero to him. A regular Florence Nightingale. <laughs> He'll never forgive me. Now, stop worrying no. about it. His own father, double cross. Oh, now, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. I had a chance to give him a break, but I didn't. Eighteen years ago, when you proposed marriage to me, I should have had the decency to turn you down. Peg! Peg! Junior! Well, they ain't home. Guy comes home from work, nobody's home. Fine thing. No respect, that's what. Well, I can't really blame them. How can they respect me after what happened yesterday? Oh, I'm no good. Oh, I'm no good. When it gets around, everybody will laugh at me. Why can't I be a man? Stand up to that Hawkins and let him have it. Just one good punch. In my knuckles. Some hero. What am I picking on the poor piano for? I should be hitting Hawkins. And I will. Sure, why not? I ain't yellow. I just don't fight unless I'm sore. And I'm sore now. I'll fix that, Hawkins. I'm going right over to his house and do it now. <laughs> Better wait till tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be much better. At the plant. In front of the whole nuts and bolts club. Yeah, I'll mobilize him. I'll pulverize him. I'll come at him like a raging bull. Hawkins, I'll say, put up your goose. You're going to get what's coming to you. And then Hawkins will say... Please, Mr. Riley, sir. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Get off your knees, Hawkins. I can't stand a coward. This is it, Hawkins. You asked for it. Oh! Oh, Mr. Riley, sir, you broke my nose. It's all crooked. It is, huh? Well, now it's straight again. Pop. Pop, what's the matter? You look so funny. What happened? Ask Hawkins. Ask him how he liked that punch in the nose I gave him. Pop, you punched Hawkins. Oh, boy. Huh? Oh. Oh, hello, Junior. You punched that Hawkins. Who, me? Oh, my gee. Oh, your, your knuckles are bleeding. Uh, oh, oh, but Junior, Oh, I... boy, you must have walloped him. No, wait. Hey, 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 Mom, Mom, come here quick. Hey, Mom, Pop punched Mr. Hawkins no, no. in the nose. Junior, wait. Don't... Well, I'm glad, Riley. 
Now, I don't approve of fighting, but if ever anybody deserved it, that Hawkins did. I hope you punched him good and hard. Peg, wait, wait. You oh, see, I... Heaven, look at your knuckles. But, Peg, I... Oh, I, I'll I, save I, him for you, dear. And don't you worry about your job. I'm glad you hit him. I'm proud of you. So am I. But, gee, I wish I could have been there when you laid him out. So do I. <laughs> I mean... I wish Junior could have been there. Why, right, you're okay, Pop. Gee, and I... I thought that... Thought what? No, it, it doesn't matter now. This proves you're okay. Well, how did it happen, Pop? Yes, dear, how did it start? You really want to know? Yeah, yeah, come on, Pop, tell us. Well, here I was, and, and there was Hawkins, just about where the piano is, and I hauled off like this, and I let him have it, right in his big teeth, like this. Ow! <laughs> and so help me, that's exactly what happened. We'll hear the second act of The Life of Riley in a moment. Oh, Ken, across the nation, the shampoo sensation is Prell. Yes, Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. You'll like Prell for two reasons. First... Prell reveals a radiant natural beauty in your hair no soap or soap shampoo can match. Prell uncovers lovely, youthful highlights, leaves your hair wonderfully soft, satin smooth, easy to manage. Second, Prell goes after unsightly dandruff quickly, removes it in as little as three minutes, leaves your hair sparkling clean, well-groomed. And Prell goes farther than any other known shampoo, cream or liquid, because it's concentrated for economy. You use less, get more lather. So ask for the shampoo in the handy tube. Ask for... P-R-E-L-L-L shampoo. Leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright. Not a bit of dandruff is in sight. Comes in a tube, handy too. P-R-E-L-L-L shampoo. By Prell Shampoo. And now back to The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Hello, dear. Hiya, champ. Oh, what's the matter, Riley? You seem upset. You bet I'm upset. Who's been telling everybody I punched Hawkins in the nose? It's all over the plant. Oh, I, I guess I told them. You? Yeah, I mean, I was bragging to some of the kids, and I guess they told their fathers. Why don't you mind your own business? Now, on account of you, I'm a hero. The guys at the plant nominated me to the Nuts and Bolts Club. <laughs> They're giving me a dinner tonight at Luigi's. Well, you always wanted to get into the club. Yeah, but well, I... then what are you yelling at Junior for? You ought to thank him. But I... But Hawkins... To... <laughs> Thanks, son. Well, I don't understand you, Riley. You stood up for your rights. Why don't you want people to know? I didn't like you to be so modest. Well, yeah. For years you've been trying to get in that club at your plant, and now you're in. What's the harm? Yeah, but you don't under... The... Yeah, what's the harm? Sure, what's done is done. Sure, what am I worrying about? Everything will be okay. Y you know, Dublin, sometimes I ain't very bright. No, dear. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You always agree with me. Uh, Junior, I I'm sorry I snapped at you. No, that's okay, Pop. Here, here's half a buck. Buy yourself something. Oh, say, thanks, Pop. Oh, this will come in handy. I'm taking Angela to the school dance tomorrow. Oh, you got a new girl. Yeah, Angela Hawkins. Well, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> Junior, you mean Hawkins, kid? Well, yeah, she's in my class. I forbid it. You stay away from that, Angela. First thing you know, Hawkins will find out I pushed him in the nose. <laughs> I mean, uh, I forbid it. But Riley, what a... Oh. Hello, Riley speaking. Riley, this is Hawkins. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Riley just moved. You, you got the Don't wrong... Don't hang up, Riley. <laughs> no, sir. I hear there's a little rumor going around that you punched me in the nose. Oh. You're a big hero. And wise guys in the Nuts and Bolts Club are giving you a dinner tonight. I thought you might like to know there's going to be an unexpected guest there. Me. Oh. And I'm going to give you the licking of your life in front of everybody. Oh. Well, who was that, Riley? Hey, uh, oh, 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 that was Ralph Edwards. <laughs> Ralph Edwards? Yeah. He wanted to know who the walking man is. <laughs> Something tells me after tonight, it ain't gonna be me. 
Oh, what a mess. I'm always getting into trouble. The minute I get out of one hole, I find myself in another. You're not the only one, believe me. <laughs> Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> oh, hello, Digger. Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. Digger, I'm in a jam. You see, I was nominated to the Nuts and Bolts Club at my plant. Ah, yes, for punching your foreman in the nose, wasn't it? Well, how did you hear? Oh, I'm always picking up dirt. <laughs> Congratulations. I can't stand foreman. I remember some years ago I had a foreman, a short, fat little character. We called him Mr. Five by Five. He was always ragging me. I thought it would never end. But fortunately, it did. Oh. How, Digger? Mr. Five by Five became Six by Three. <laughs> well, my trouble is I never really hit Hawkins. It's just a rumor. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And everybody believes you were brave enough to punch the bully? Yeah. Everybody but the bully. <laughs> oh, this is serious. Riley, your fellow men must never know of your deceit. Let me see. There must be some way I can cover you up. <laughs> Oh, it's too late. They'll find out. Hawkins said he's coming to the dinner tonight and show me up. He weighs 280. I've handled them bigger. <laughs> but this is a dinner. If I don't fight Hawkins, everybody will look down at me where the place where I work. If you do fight Hawkins, everybody will look down at you at the place where I work. <laughs> I don't know what to do, Digger. There's only one thing you can do if you're a man. Go to this dinner. Face this huge bruiser. Stand your ground. And no matter what happens, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll have to go, but not tonight. I'll ask him to make the dinner next month. No, Riley, don't procrastinate. Yeah, you're right, Digger. I might as well face the music tonight. That's the spirit. In our profession, we have a say. Never put off till tomorrow what you can put away today. <laughs> well, cheerio. I'd better be... Shoveling off. All right, order, 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 order. The monthly meeting of the Nuts and Bolts Club will now come to order. Yeah, fellow members, we are gathered here to welcome co-worker Chester A. Riley amongst our midst. And we all know what he's done to deserve this honor. It's something we've all been aching to do for years. Only he had the guts to do it. And also the knuckles. Now, uh, if, if there are any objections before I pronounce candidate Riley a full-fledged bolt in the Nuts and Bolts Club, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. No objections? Okay. I hereby... Mr. Chen. The chair recognizes both... Jim Gillis. Mr. Chen, fellow members, I got a few words to say. Riley, I'm your best friend, ain't I? That's right, for 20 years. I'm like a brother to you? That's right, we're sisters under the skin. <laughs> I'd do anything for you, right? Right. But I'm against letting you into this club. Hey, oh, no! Order, order. Let's look at the facts without prejudice. All of a sudden, all of a sudden we hear Riley punches Hawkins in the nose. Well, I just want to ask one question. Where? When? How? Who saw him? Who was there? And Hawkins. Is the shape of Hawkins' nose any different? No. It's just as crooked as it always was. I say, let's not be hasty. I'm Riley's dearest pal. But I say, before we let him into this club... Let's investigate it! Order! 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 Candidate Riley, you have heard Gillis. I'm afraid we'll have to have a few more details as to just how you punched Hawkins in the nose. Tell us well, what happened. Well, fellas, it, it was this way. I, uh, I'm reminded of a little story. There was once a Scotchman called McCaddy. Six to Hawkins. Well, it, you see, Hawkins came over and called me a stupid... And then you hit him? 
There was once this Scotchman called McTavish. What about Hawkins? Uh, yeah, well, well, he, he came over, see, and he said I was a moron, so I hold off like this, and... And then you hit him. So this Scotchman called McTavish... <laughs> One day he was pressing his key. Come on, come oh. on, get to the point. Well, uh, pardon me, James. Yeah, what is it, waiter? Is there a Mr. Riley here? Yeah, that's me. There's a Mr. Hawkins outside wants to see you. What'll I tell him? Tavish. <laughs> Wait I, 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 a minute. What's going on here? Hawkins is here to see Riley? Yesterday he got punched in the nose. Today he looks like they're pals. I don't like that. Oh, wait, oh, fellas. Oh, oh, wait a minute, oh, fellas. I ain't no pal of Hawkins. Riley, Riley. No matter what you say, the members is going to be septic. But there is. There is one sure way that we can settle this. You say you punched Hawkins on the nose? Well, go out there and do it again. Punch him? In cold blood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on the house. Well, fellas, wait. Stop pushing me. I... Now, wait, guys. Better let Riley go in there alone. See, if we all go, Hawkins will think we're ganging up on him and run away. Yeah, that's right. Well, go on, Riley. Go ahead, Riley. We'll come in when we hear Hawkins begging for mercy. Yeah. Well, here I go. Goodbye, boys. I, I mean... So here you are, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hawkins, sir. Celebrating how you punched me in the nose, eh? <laughs> Mr. Hawkins... Please, why are you rolling up your sleeves? Riley, you ever play with a jigsaw puzzle? Yeah, you want to play? <laughs> no, I'm just asking, because when I get through with you, you're going to be in so many pieces, you'll have to be an expert to put yourself together again. Stand still, you coward. That's done it. You can't call me a coward. It's bad enough my junior did it. Put up your dukes, Hawkins. I'm coming at you, you boy. <laughs> Get up off the floor, Riley. <laughs> you bent the radiator with your head. Oh. Why did you duck, you snake? Oh, my head. Feeling better, Riley? Oh. I'll wait here while you get your strength back. I don't want to murder you until you're nice and healthy. <laughs> okay, Hawkins, I'll fight you. But promise me you'll tell my wife I wasn't afraid. It'll be a pleasure. And tell Digger Odell I died like a... Mi Never mind, I'll tell him myself. And tell my boy, Junior, his father wasn't a coward. Such a nice little boy. Ask your daughter, Angela. Never mind my daughter, Angela. What? Hey, wait a minute. Did you say Junior? Yeah, my boy. The kid who's taking my little Angela to the dance tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, he loves to dance. I encourage him. That's your boy? Yeah, he's mine. All paid for. <laughs> I got the doctor's receipt to prove it. Hey, that's right. I saw him with you that day at the plant. Oh, he's such a nice boy. My sweet little angel is crazy about him. You know, it looked like the poor little angel wasn't going to this dance. And then your boy asked her. Oh, she's so happy. I took her to the beauty parlor and gave her a permanent wave. <laughs> and I had her little toenails painted. You mean the ones on her feet? <laughs> yeah. Ox blood red. Oh. And say, you know, she looks like a little princess. Ah, oh, she's so... Riley, what are you doing on the floor? Get up, you'll catch cold. Well, ain't you going to hit me? Hit you? Junior's father? I should say not. My little Angela would never forgive me. Come on, get up. Oh, well, thanks, Mr. Hawkins. Call me Gus. Okay, Gus. Gee, I'm glad we ain't fighting anymore. Uh, why should we fight? After all, your junior and my Angela, well, who knows? Maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time to fight over who's going to pay for the wedding. <laughs> you know, Gus, Gus, I'm sorry the rumor got around that I punched you. I'll tell the boys I really didn't. No, no, let them think what they want. Don't do me no harm. But you know, I'm kind of curious. How did that rumor start? Oh, well, it's a long story. You see, I skinned my knuckles, you see, and they were bleeding. You, you see the scars? Where? Oh, yeah, you right poor knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> How did it happen, pal? Well, you see, we got a piano in my house, and I was standing here, and the piano was there, just about where you're standing. Uh -huh. And I was mad at something, and I hauled off and hit the piano like this. <laughs> 
my nose! It, you broke my nose! Oh, look, it's broken! No, I, I didn't mean it, Gus. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Gus. Hey, Riley, the boy... Oh, my nose! Hey. Holy smoke! Hey, fellas, look! Riley's done it again! Hey, 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 only going to make you a full-fledged member, but we're going to give you the highest honor possible. And I second the emotion. <laughs> Fellas, get it. You mean, you mean you're... Yeah. Oh, I, I got to phone Peg and tell her. Oh, boy, wait till she hears. Gee, fellas, I'll try to live up to this honor, really. I, oh, hello, Peg. Yeah, this is Riley. No, no, nothing's wrong. Yeah, I'm at the dinner. Yeah, they elected me all right. But they didn't make me a boat. I'm proud to say your husband is a nut. <laughs> the Rileys will be back in just a moment. Everywhere people welcome new Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. This is Anna A. Flood of Detroit, Michigan, right? I love Prell myself. And believe me, Prell's a real joy to a busy mother. Now the children help with their own shampoos, and we're through in jig time. And Prell leaves their hair really clean and radiant. Friends, try Prell yourself. See if you don't agree. Prell removes unsightly dandruff quickly. Leaves hair radiantly clean, radiantly beautiful. Try... P-R-E-L-L Prell Shampoo Leaves hair radiant, streaming bright Marvel Fitter Dandruff is a sight Comes in a tube, handy too P-R-E-L-L Prell Shampoo Hiya, Pop. Well, Junior, what are you doing home? You were supposed to take Angela to the dance tonight. Yeah, I know, but I, I broke the date. You what? Well, that Angela bores me. I broke the date. Oh, Junior, why did you do it? That ain't the only thing that's going to be broken. How could you... Hello? Oh. Yeah, Mr. Hawkins. Yeah, I was expecting to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, I know what happened. Yeah, okay, Mr. Hawkins, here's my nose. Come and get it. <laughs> Dr. Gamble invites you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. The script is by Alan Lipscott, Reuben Schiff, and Dick Powell. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Bigger Odell is John Brown. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. In the factory. On the farm. In the home. Hey, Mom, where's the lava soap? Yes, everywhere. Everybody depends on L-A-V-A, lava soap, to get dirty hands really clean because lava gets the stubborn dirt and grime ordinary wash-ups miss. In every inch of lava's snowy lather, 50,000 tiny scrubbers remove deep dirt from skin crevices between fingers around fingernails. Yes, with lava, hands soiled by the dirtiest dirt, the grimiest grime comes sparkling clean in 30 to 50 seconds. As Mr. Fred Duro of Niagara Falls says, I work in the lathe room at the Carborundum Company. You never saw hands get as dirty as mine, but a quick wash-up with lava is all I need. Leaves my hands real clean and feeling good, too. And remember, lava is gentle enough even for children's tender skin. So get the soap that gets the dirt. Get lava soap. <laughs> This is Ken Niles reminding you that for radiantly clean, lovely hair, get the shampoo in the tube. P-R-E-L-L. Prell Shampoo. Listen again next week when Prell brings you The Life of Riley. And now stay tuned for Truth or Consequences. Goodbye. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Friday for the next episode of The Life of Riley and check in on Monday for the next installment of The Aldrich Family. Please go to our website 
classiccomedyotr.com and click on the Become a Patron button to support our show on an ongoing basis or click on the Donate button to donate via PayPal on a single-time basis. Either way, your support of the show is much needed and much appreciated. Until next time, in the words of Robert Frost, In three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. <laughs>